Good day, everyone. Today, I, together with my colleagues, visiting a trial station in Latvia, where is our private trial of well-known varieties and newcomers. And we together are trying to investigate how our variety is looking in the spring after such a hard conditions in autumn, when we all know uh, the weather conditions for emergency because of dry and, and, and dry conditions was very problematic. Um, so we see some Wurten hardness, uh, but that's not such a big uh, surprise for us because in autumn time in Lithuania we investigate around 30% of, of oyster rape uh, under question, that was questionable fields. Uh, in Latvia uh, the situation during autumn period was a little bit better, but uh, right now in spring we see pretty much the same conditions in both countries. So I would like to ask my colleague Alar to represent the current status in Estonia, how winter also drape looks like. Could you please share? Yes, of course. Um, uh, if we look back to the winter in Estonia, we had a uh, very uh, different situation in different parts uh, of Estonia. E especially if we look uh, January, we had uh, minus degrees up to 25. And then again, after a few weeks, uh, plus 10 degrees, which caused uh, standing water on the fields. We didn't know what will be uh, under the snow and hoping the best. But uh, we uh, at the moment see that uh, uh, the situation is quite promising. Uh, but a few weeks uh, will explain us how it will be a real situation. So, and uh, I'm quite happy to be here in Merab's farm uh, uh, to, to get knowledge and uh, looking back uh, these uh, new candidates and varieties uh, which uh, show us uh, winter hardiness because the winter hardiness is uh, still a topic for Estonia. So we know the current status in Baltic countries and I am very interested how everything looks in Europe regarding winter hardiness. So I, I ask you, René, to represent and, and show us the situation. Thanks, Ananina. Well, um, yeah, winter 2023 is uh, very difficult uh, and uh, different uh, to the situations in the last years. We uh, see now um, uh, for northern uh, countries from uh, North Sea via Baltic Sea uh, winter damage appearances uh, from, uh, from the west, from countries like UK and, and Denmark where it's really untypical till here in the Baltic uh, countries. In general we can say for all of these uh, uh, different uh, winter damage cases there's a few similarities. Uh, we had a, a nice development last year in the autumn time which lead to um, stem elongation even in some cases and now with these uh, uh, fluctuating temperatures and uh, with these uh, uh, several frost appearances we see if now this winter killing. We see here a nice uh, different uh, uh, picture for, for the um, impact from the breeder side. So clear differences uh, in, the, uh, in the varieties. And yeah, um, coming weeks I think will uh, uh, underline then finally the, the, the full picture. But uh, for the moment we can say uh, there is uh, some uh, um, small regional uh, cases in uh, countries like uh, UK and Denmark. Mm -hmm. South of Sweden is heavily impacted, that's something what I have already heard. And then yeah, we see here the situation in the Baltic countries, but also in uh, uh, our markets like uh, Belarus and partly in, in Russia there is a, a, a bigger um, comments of, of winter damage. So I think uh, we can expect somehow an impact of 200, 300,000 hectares maybe in the coming uh, weeks. Mm -hmm. But of course, uh, final picture will come up in the next three to four weeks. All right, so we have a status from Baltics, from Europe, and I would like to ask our good friend from Sweden, Albin, to share the current status of uh, winter hardiness in Sweden, keeping in mind that in two past years there were a serious problems with uh, winter killing. So Alvin, could you please share uh, with your feeling, with your experience from today? Good morning Antonina. I think that we should try to see what we have on the result here. 
We have about a tenth of a feet or so over in the snow. I'll prepare a bit here. Uh, temperature is uh, about uh, 0.8 and plus degrees in soil. It's frozen feet up here. But if we try to put up a plant, a frozen in, in the soil, but here we have a plant that you can see the, the, the green. Uh, new green leaves that uh, started to grow before the snow 10 days ago. Uh, we have quite a good ro rot. Uh, root. Uh, uh, it's about uh, 15 millimeters of root neck. And I think this is a plant with uh, that we're prepared to be quite good shape in order to survive the Swedish winter. Uh, so hopefully uh, with the next 10 days we will have 5 to 10 plus degrees. The snow will uh, disappear within 3-4 days and uh, the whole seed rate will, will start to grow. I'm very interested how it was situation in that past two years. How do you manage uh, keeping in mind that there were such a big problems regarding winter hardiness? I think that we could use this information for our farmers because uh, yeah, in Baltics, we also probably will have some issues in some fields. Well, uh, we have had more or less a decade without winter damage in Sweden, but with start 2001-2022, we got winter damage in uh, our trials, and that was, was really good. And it was uh, the start of a like, big selection of the right. From, uh, from those years, uh, we've actually have seen that the variety is like uh, Apumara, Mercedes, and Parkos, and also uh, last year Herefest uh, had a quite good winter performance. Uh, we also see that the uh, variety like uh, Expat from, from the cow performed quite well. Um, and uh, we also did um, um, com uh, comparison between plant density um, and yield from this tribe. If we have uh, from one to five plants per meter square, we got a yield in the trial for, for about 3.5 pounds, but as soon as we get up to five to 10 plants per meter square, we were up to 4.5 pounds or something. And then uh, between 10 and 50, 25 and tw uh, 25 to to 40, we got them out to 4.5 up to, to 5 pounds per uh, per hectare. And um, that's a trial. But if you take away about a ton on that, uh, I think you can uh, uh, expect a yield of uh, 3, 3.2, 3 3.5 tons if you have 5 to 10 tons per, per meter square. But the important thing is to have plants on every meter square, and, and you must be aware of weeds. And uh, weeds will quick uh, take place and, and uh, take a lot of, of, uh, of light and, and, and fertilizer from the plant and can, it can destroy the crop. But if you're prepared to make a wind application in, in uh, early spring, you can get quite good yield of all the with the damage things where you have just in that plant slit. Thanks, Albin. That's really helpful for us. Um, then I have another question, also very important for our farmers regarding botrytis. Uh, I know you have some experience. Could you please share with us? Uh, yeah, because we need uh, to get the knowledge how to solve this problem because it's not very often disease for Baltics. When it's about uh, botrytis, we had an uh, um, infection in 2012. Um, that was. Uh, Winter quite similar to this. We got winter damage in uh, in uh, the early part of the year, and in these wounds of the plants, the tree is uh, infected and uh, started to grow quite quick. We put out uh, trials with uh, boscalid and asoxisrubin. Uh, the application was done very very early in early April, and uh, boscalid worked quite good. Uh, we got about uh, two hundred kilos of wolves in rape. Uh, per hectare after that uh, application and um, uh, 
the infection of botrytis didn't, uh, did stop when the temperature went higher and the plant started to grow. Uh, so we didn't got problems with any lodging. Um, in outside trials in the, in the field, we could have single panels that lodged, but but uh, lodging as, as common was not a problem. Uh, the, the temperature uh, solved the problem, but also the the application of, of the canthus in in form of uh, boscaline um, uh, with a good improvement of, of being. So I think an early application with the boscaline can be a, a good idea. So my fingers crossed that we will manage somehow to, to, to stop with the, the disease. Um, the last question from my side. Uh, in some plots, as I mentioned, there's uh, winter hardness and it, it means that in, in square meter there's a low amount of plants. Uh, I know you have a huge experience regarding different varieties and, 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 and winter hardiness. Maybe you could give some advices from your side how to react for farmers, how to, how to manage uh, the plots. Uh, yeah, just, just, just a brief experience from your side. Well, if you have a low density plant task now, uh, the most important thing is that uh, you have plant for every meter square. Uh, and be aware of the weeds. You might have to do an application only in the early spring. Uh, but uh, as you can see with the, our compare, compassions with, with um, different plant density in England, those went to damage trial. Uh, just a few plants uh, can give, give you quite a good yield. I think that's. Uh, with the market prices we have today, I, I think you should even go on with the OLC rate that might not be look so good as, as you used to. Thanks, Alban, for everything. Uh, yeah, my fingers crossed it. I hope that uh, we will measure, manage all those kind of problems in this spring. And uh, yeah, thank you one more time. And we will, we will wait you to come here in Baltics.